Hello and welcome to my guide to Skyreach on Heroic Difficulty. In this guide I'm going to go through all the bosses, explain their abilities and then give you a kind of rough TLDR strategy of the whole fight. I'm going to skip out covering trash because honestly it takes up a lot of time and most of it is all completely self-explanatory. Just, you know, CC stuff when you can and uh, don't be silly and that should probably do you fine. Now then, let's move on to the first boss. This is Ranjit. Now, this boss is mainly centered around you avoiding various fun things that he'll throw at you. First of all, he will throw spinning blades around the place. They do decent damage, so try to avoid them. His next ability is Windfall. He basically throws a chakram at you, which will then spawn four walls of wind, which will just rotate around the chakram. Just run out of the area. And then on Heroic, he also does Lens Flare. This just targets a player and spawns fire under their feet. It's basically like the laser from Siegecraft or Blackfuse. Be sure to kite this fire over a safe area, i.e. not on top of all of your friends. Preferably like around the outside of the arena or something like that. Now next we've got his main ability, like the big scary one. This is four winds. This basically creates four walls of wind which start from the center of the room and span around its whole radius. These then spin around in a circle, causing heavy damage to anyone who touches them. So just keep moving and, you know, keep your eyes open for things like the wind walls and the lens flares. Now on top of this, he does Piercing Rush, which will cause him to charge someone and deal a lot of damage, and then Fan of Blades, which will put a bleed on people, which healers will probably have to watch out for. So in summary, all players must avoid standing in the various dangerous things. Anyone who gets the laser beam must kite it somewhere that is not on top of the group. Then healers need to watch out for the bleed effect, and both healers and tanks will need to watch out for the damage and placement issues caused by the boss's charge ability. Next, let's move on to Arachnath. Now, this is really quite a simple boss. The whole gimmick is that there are these beams of light which shoot off from the side of the room. These will heal the boss, and to stop him from healing the boss, the players must stand inside the beams, which um, will then cause you to take damage. So there's a bit of a trade-off there, but you do need to stand in them because the boss healing up is obviously quite a bad thing. Now, on top of that, he only does two other abilities. Burst will hurt everyone in the room, and every time he bursts, he gets a stacking buff, which increases the damage of his subsequent bursts. This is a soft and rage mechanic. Then finally, he does smash. This is just a frontal cone, which causes very heavy damage. So in terms of strategy, the tank should take one of the beams and then ensure that the boss is not facing the rest of the group. Now for the healers, well, you'll need to be aware of who is standing the various beams as those people will take quite a lot of damage. And if someone is at low health and then the boss does burst, well, then there's a good chance that person might die because Burst does hit very heavily. Finally, the rest of the DPS should just take the remaining beams. If you feel like you're going to die, then just be sure to step out of a beam or use the defensive cooldown. Yes, if you step out, that might heal the boss a little bit, but it's better that happens than you being dead. Also, don't run in front of the boss because you'll get hit by the frontal cone. Now next we've got Rook Ran. This is one of the more annoying bosses. His main gimmick is the ads. So the room, as you can see, is covered in these piles of ash. And initially the boss will turn one of these piles of ash into a phoenix at. This causes the ash to explode and deal damage to nearby players. So just in general, don't stand anywhere near the ash. The ad then will fixate on someone and basically if it touches that person, then it will explode, which does group wide damage and causes any nearby piles of ash to turn into even more ads. Now, um, these will also explode when they're killed, which will activate um, ash piles within five yards, and if one of these flies into an ash pile, then it will activate the ash pile. Basically, if these are anywhere near other ash piles and something happens, then the ash piles will turn into more ads. This can spiral out of control quickly, so the best thing to do is just to kill these ads before they even move. And you can do that. It takes maybe a few seconds for them to start to fixate on someone, so that should be enough time for a well-focused group to just deal with the ad then and there. Now next, let's talk about the boss's abilities. On Heroic, he does Quills. This does heavy damage to anyone who is not behind the pillar. Then there's also Screech. This does group-wide damage if there is no player in melee range of the boss. This means that the tank basically must be glued to the boss, um, so once Quills happens, the tank needs to get back to the boss really quite quickly. Finally, the boss will do Pierce Armor. This will apply a tank debuff and it does very high damage. But the good news is that the tank debuff component can be avoided if you use your class's active mitigation. So in summary, nuke the adds as fast as you possibly can and then run behind the pillar during quills. 
Tanks must be aware of Pierce armor and healers must prepare for heavy tank damage basically throughout the fight. Plus, if a player is a little bit late in getting behind the pillar, then the healer might need to top them up to ensure that they don't die. So finally, we've got High Sage Virix. This is a fight in which basically everyone will need to pay attention. Now, the boss actually doesn't do that much other than Solar Burst, which is an interruptible nuke that really is not that problematic. Just interrupt it from time to time. Really, it's fine. Now, the main meat of this fight is the two different kinds of adds and the fire beam. So first of all, I'll cover the adds. Basically, there's one ad, which is a Valkyr from the Lich King. It will pick someone up and try to drop them off the platform. Now, these ads can be slowed, stunned, and death gripped, and also you can attack the ad if you are picked up by it. Then there are shielding constructs. These will shield the boss while they're alive, so simply kill them and then move back to the boss. Then finally, we've got a fire beam. These will focus on players and put fire on the ground and just don't kite it through the group. So really, in summary, just interrupt the stuff on the boss, be sure to free people from the Valkyr as soon as you possibly can, and then kill the shielding constructs. And if you get the fire beam, don't drop it on top of your friends. That's a pretty bad thing to do. You know, it is a giant laser. Oh, and also, if you are the tank, then you shouldn't tank the boss near the edges of the platform because then, you know, people will be standing at the edge of the platform and the Valkyr will just be able to easily pick them up and throw them off, which isn't particularly good. And then, like, in terms of just healer-specific mechanics, it's really just dealing with the general damage. There's nothing that's particularly designed to test you on an individual level. Anyway, that's it for this guide. Overall, I think this is a very fun dungeon, and hopefully this has helped you out. Now, you can check out the channel for many other guides for other dungeons, and eventually for raids, and then things like garrisons, leveling, apexes, crystals, followers, the whole works. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.